The Ottawa Senators and Buffalo Sabres once again have had disappointing seasons, but who will win tonight? We'll find out and break down that game as well as the Boston Bruins and Tampa Bay Lightning. A weird schedule, but it's to no one's surprise. Uh, just two games tonight in the NHL. Best bets, of course, uh, still at the end of the show. I'm Andrew. I've got Carmine with me as usual, and you're watching Puck Time on Wager Talk TV. We'll also break down some playoff matchups and potential uh, teams to make the playoffs at the end of the show as well. Welcome in, Carm. Good to see you. How was your night last night, and what are your thoughts on the Sabres and the Sens? Under God, man, uh, we, Andrew, we got some uh, unbelievable games <laughs> yesterday. Uh, everything from that uh, that Florida, the 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 Florida Boston game to the Rangers, they exploded for like seven goals. Those two teams in the third period just shot that game over the uh, over the total. If you had the under, you're sitting so uh, well. Uh, Pittsburgh knocks off Carolina. I had Carolina, so uh, I'm not happy about that one. Detroit, Washington, go to OOT. I said the first seven games were going to be great games. Uh, the Devils spanked the Leafs. Uh, Nashville comes back from, uh, I think what they, they were down 3-1, 3 nothing in the end of the first period. They come back. Marco D'Angelo was at that game in Nashville uh, with his wife as part of the birthday gift. He took her there to watch Nashville come back and beat the Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, Marco, what did you do there? And then the Winnipeg Jets come back against Edmonton, and then they lose it in OT. Andrew, those games were phenomenal. The rest of the games were a little bit of junk, uh, to be honest with you, except for your free space on the bingo card. What were they, plus 400? Montreal Canadiens go into Colorado and beat the Avalanche. And I'm going to pat myself on the back. I never do it, uh, especially because I just told you I lost with Carolina. I said take uh dallas stars team total over five and a half plus 235 they scored six goals in that game uh six to three win there andrew i sent you my ticket uh guys i don't want to post the ticket but i bet uh the, t the team totals for uh dallas over three and a half over four over four and a half and over five and a half four single bets um they all cashed pretty happy about that uh, it's going to be pizza in the Bianco household all week long, Andrew. So um, with that said, before I get to this first game, Ottawa and Buffalo, because everyone's just excited about listening to Ottawa and Buffalo, the free space on the bingo card, Andrew. How did, how did Montreal go into uh, to, uh, Colorado and win? Hey, it's not the first time they beat them this year either. Second time they beat the Avalanche this year. They beat them at the Bell Center earlier on. It's it's the bright spots, Carm, uh, of 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 this team right now. I, I remember saying to you like a year ago, I would rather this team be bad and young than bad and old. And what they've done is built with a younger team now. You know, one of the younger teams by average in the entire hockey league. And uh, Suzuki scores a goal again. He breaks his career high. Slavkovsky now on a nine-game point streak. He is now uh, the highest point scorer, in, a teenager in Montreal Canadiens history. So, you know, guys like that playing really well. Uh, Montembeau, I got to say, Montembeau, if you remember, I don't know if you'll remember me, me doing this, Karn, but I used to bash on this guy a few years ago. I thought he was horrible, not a good NHL goalie. Even though he was playing behind the Habs, I still thought he wasn't very good. And he has really developed into a number one goaltender. And call me crazy, but, uh, you know, a couple other guys said this as well, like Kevin Bieksa. I think that he, he deserves to be the number three guy on Team Canada come uh, Olympic time, but that's for a whole new conversation. But uh, I was excited, man. And, and uh, Hey, look, look, let's be real. The avalanche probably took them lightly at the start and uh, didn't expect a good game, but they got one. And uh, I was certainly happy about that. I cashed my Bruins uh, best bet on the show yesterday. Um, some tough luck with some other results there, but I was happy to get the, uh, the underdog winner. And uh, hopefully uh, you and I can go two and zero with the best bets again today. But uh, your free space on the bingo card, the Buffalo Sabres, they had a good week and a half stretch, Carm. They had a good little run, and now they seem to be back to their old selves. So, so how do you bet this game? Well, there's only one way to bet to bet this game. Um, well, there's a couple ways to bet the game. If you like uh, goals, I think we're going to see some goals here. Even with Lucan in, uh, in goal for the Sabres, and he's, play, he's playing well. He just doesn't get the support sometimes. He obviously didn't get it in Edmonton. 
um, you know, when they lost, uh, you know, or when the Sabres lost 8-3, they, they lose, uh, you know, 3-2 to, um, to Vancouver. But they played a really good game in, in Calgary, winning that game 4-1. And, and they went into that game as favorites in that game. I think they're, they closed at 135 in Calgary, which um, is the books literally telling you Calgary's out of the playoffs. The Sabres still have an outside chance. We're going to show you a chart a little later on. Uh, after these two games and talk a little bit of uh, projected playoffs. Uh, but this is like a must win for the Sabres. And again, must wins <laughs> don't mean you win. This is just to give them hope. Um, it's hope that, it, Andrew, it's just not going to happen for the Sabres this season. It, it should be looking in and goal uh, for them. They're minus 135 in this game. And, uh, you know, off this road trip, they've had a couple of days off. Uh, it ended in Calgary, so uh, it, it's not uh, it uh, it's it's not like a true Western road trip where they're coming from the West Coast. They're coming from the middle of Canada, Alberta, a place that uh, kills a lot of my tickets uh, this season. Andrew, I, I just think this is a good spot for the Sabers here. Ottawa's playing well. They somehow upset the Edmonton Oilers uh, despite getting outshot in that game. Um, penalties was uh, was Edmonton's undoing in that game or else they should have won that game against Ottawa. Uh, they somehow beat the New Jersey Devils. But this is still a team that, if you look at some of their score lines, 7-2 to the Canes, 6-2 uh, to the Bruins, 5-2 uh, loss to the, um, uh, the St. Louis Blues. Andrew, this is a team, when they lose, they lose bad. And when they win, they surprise you. Uh, I just don't think they're going to Buffalo and win tonight. I think um, 135 is about the right price. I wouldn't spend more than $1.40 on this game if if, if there's a hike in, in the price. I just wouldn't lay it because at some point, uh, people are going to come back in on the Senators and take that plus money based on the fact that they did beat Edmonton, the fact that they did beat New Jersey. But those people aren't looking at the analytics of the game. Yes, they were wins, but there were games in which they were badly outplayed and somehow found a way to win. If they get badly outplayed tonight, the Sabres are going to beat them and beat them handily. With that said, uh, give me like a 5-3 Sabres game and I'll be happy with it. Uh, the total hits, the Sabres hit, and uh, it keeps them alive for at least another day. It keeps them alive. And at that point, they're in the middle, man. They're Switzerland right now because they're they're not getting a high draft pick, but they're not making the postseason. The, they're, they're just somewhere in the middle at this point That's here. It. Uh, and that's a tough spot to be in. And I know all about that spot for, for the Canadians for many years. We're in that spot. Um, look, I get what you meant, what you were saying there about the Ottawa senators, because their last two wins, they didn't deserve to win them analytically, right? I was against them on one of them and the Oilers. We've talked about that already twice this week, but sometimes you just see that happen around this time of year. Teams just, cause I'm sure there's been all kinds of games this year. The senators might've deserved to win, but they didn't, you know, or they might've had, 35 plus shots and only scored two goals, things like that. So when I look at stuff like that, I, I do take it into account. But at the same time, this Ottawa team is just finding a way. And, and, you know, as Brian Leonard talks about on Wednesdays, you know, that he says it's the luck factor. But, uh, you know, we'll say it's the it's the finding a way factor. You know what I mean? Like, it's like just it's it's just hockey. You know, sometimes teams are just they just seeing it. Well, they're just finding a way to win games. And. When that happens, you're kind of rolling in a certain way. And when I look at this Ottawa roster right now, they're playing with more grit than I saw them play all year. And one thing about Ottawa is I've always found this year, we give a lot of crap for Toronto being a soft team. They've definitely gotten stronger and more physical with Domi and Bertuzzi and those guys. Why don't we ever say that Ottawa's a soft team? Because Shane Pinto, Batherson, Josh Norris, and those guys, definitely Tim Stutzla, those guys aren't very rough, you know, but it's the same thing I said yesterday in the Washington game, Carm. You're going to, this is, you know, obviously it's not two teams fighting for a playoff spot. It's two teams in the bottom. But when you give me two teams like this, I just want to bet the underdog. If Buffalo was giving me this price, I would take them as well. And I understand there's home ice and things like that, but I simply just do not want to lay a price in a game like this. And you take a look at some of the goals they have allowed recently. Like you said, eight goals against Edmonton, um, four goals against Detroit, four goals against Nashville. This is a team that's still given up goals, but I just don't like the consistency 
of this Buffalo team. So for Ottawa right now, I believe they're going to do the exact same thing they did last year. And they're going to go on a run when it means nothing. So, you know, that's what happens with some teams like this. They, they It feels like they have no pressure on their shoulders. And, you know, then they start actually playing the hockey they should be playing the entire season. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and uh, take the Ottawa Senators on the money line, Karma. I've got Slack absolutely blowing yeah. up in my ear, ear right now. So I'm going to go right over to you. I don't know what you guys are saying about me, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to go back to you. <laughs> Producer Dan and I are blowing up uh, Slack. I'm sorry, Andrew. It's buzzing in your ear. But listen, uh, the problem with the Sabres this year, uh, and it's it's been a problem all year long. If, if you remember the Sabres last year, uh, they finished one point out of the playoffs. Uh, they were one of the highest scoring teams in the NHL. and But they allowed a lot of goals as well, too. Their, their plus minus uh, or goal differential wasn't very high. I think at the end of last season, just off the top of my head, it was probably three to four goal uh, difference. Uh, it was their power play last year. Their power play at the beginning of the season or the first half of the season was phenomenal. They were scoring goals and the Sabres are scoring goals. If you look at the first half of the season, they weren't scoring goals. Their power play was abysmal and they weren't winning games and they buried themselves. And I always say a good team cannot lose seven, eight games in a row a couple times during the season and expect to make the playoffs. It just doesn't happen. And that's why when Prez was on and talked about the Sabres uh, still in the playoff hunt, I'm like, no, it's not going to happen. It, it just isn't going to happen. And it's kind of my thought. Um, and it could be, I'm going to, uh, there's a good chance I get proven wrong on this one, but uh, right now the Washington Capitals are playing very well defensively and they're winning games, but you look at their, um, their goal differential on the season and they're like minus 20 ish something like that i can't remember the last time a team has made the playoffs with a minus goal differential uh, i wish brian leonard was here and if he's watching the show right now um please put it in the live chat brian if you're watching because i don't remember a, a team last year or the or the previous year making it in with a minus goal differential but um to a man uh, Washington just goes out there, waits for you to make a mistake, uh, capitalizes, and then just grinds you into the ice. They did it to Detroit yesterday, Andrew. I know we're, I, I'm changing, uh, uh, I'm going off on tangents here. I've already given my opinion on the Sabres game, but if you watch the Detroit Washington game, which I was watching last night, one of the many games I was watching, in their own zone, off a, a defensive, uh, off a, a face off in their defensive zone, Washington wins it, and the Detroit guys are just standing around. And Washington quickly cycles the puck and it's in the net. And I'm like, these guys are just standing still. Of course, you can't blame the goalie on these ones. You can't blame Alex Lyon when the five guys are just standing there like bumps on a log. <laughs> Andrew, yeah. you got to be able to play defense uh, in your own zone. And Detroit didn't do it. Uh, you uh, Outscoring, just trying to outscore teams isn't going to be enough. Uh, we're in the last three weeks of the season. If you can't play some sort of D, you're going to lose games. And uh, boy, they, uh, that was a big one for them. An OT win would have put them equal on points, but still outside of the playoffs because of the regulation wins. But it uh, would have been a lot better than giving up. A, they picked up a point, but they're two back, I believe, now. And um, dire straits for them. They're gonna have, they, they play Washington one more time, but... Uh, um, you'll see on the chart, the playoff percentages are going down on that one, Andrew, but let's get to the next game. Yeah. The Capitals aren't going away, man. And I said yesterday, they're a top heavy team, three players, Strom, Ovechkin, McMichael right now, McMichael scores at like plus two fifty. Strom scores the game winning goal. So, uh, that was an exciting game for me. And I gave out a point, uh, for plus one Oh five on the show, but plus two fifty, plus 200 ballpark for the goal is always nice. Real quick, shout out to uh, Parker, Daryl, uh, UC Panda, uh, Russell, all of you guys tuning in live. We appreciate you whether you're tuning in live or after the show. Guys, do us a favor. Hit the like button. We really, really, really do appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to the channel. Let's try and bump those numbers up. Uh, we want to get to some big numbers before the summer here on this channel. Let's jump into the real game of the night. We'll call it here, Carve. Not the joke The joke game of the night. The game that actually means something. And uh, the Boston Bruins coming off a win. And it was an absolute battle for them last night. Very physical playoff-type atmosphere. 
And well, this one's not going to be a walk in the park either here. Boston Bruins, Tampa Bay Lightning. It's going to be a tough one here uh, in Tampa Bay. And, you know, I feel like Carm, I was watching a video earlier today actually about this. The Tampa Bay Lightning, do you feel like they're flying under the radar right now? Like, I, I feel like nobody is talking about them. I think about the last championship, the, the Golden State Warriors won in the NBA. Nobody gave them a chance. They weren't being talked about enough. And, and now you think about this spot here. I mean, we're getting plus, you're getting what, 21, 22, 20, I think I saw it as high as 25 to 1 at one point for the Tampa Bay Lightning to win the Stanley Cup. You know, right now in this spot, they're minus 115, catching the Bruins second half of a back-to-back. But would you say right now, Carm, that with the top six this team has, they still have Vasilevsky, they still have Hedman, that people aren't talking about them enough right now? Um, well, I've been talking about them, but I was talking about them just <laughs> because, Andrew, um, you, you look at this team, and I know you're laughing at me right now, man, but it, it's fine. Uh, I've been laughed at. Uh, you have been is, talking uh, about them, though. You're right. We, we talked about usually the last month of the season. Uh, it John Cooper is like, he's, he's he, they're in the playoffs. They don't care where they finish because they know that they have a team that's built that can win on the road. And, you know, and with that with that said, uh, you know, he manages minutes for his players. He, he, he can't do that this year. <laughs> or he hasn't been able to do it, and they went on a nice little run. You look at it, and, you know, it started with, you know, again, uh, it was a five-game win streak before they lose in OT to the LA Kings, but, you know, 7 nothing over Philly. Uh, Followed that up with 6-3 over the Rangers, uh, 5-3 over Florida, and then 5-3 over Vegas. All quality teams. Then they beat the Sharks 4-1. to uh, They lose to the Kings. They came back in that game, but then lose to the Kings in OT. Um, and then um, kind of a workman-like but not impressive win against Anaheim to close off that road trip. But as far as they're concerned, successful road trip. The, um, not including the game, obviously, in Florida, but on the West Coast, they pick up seven of a possible eight points. You can't beat that. They're now um, a little more comfortable right now as far as playoff positioning go, goes. It, to me, it's just Andrew. It, it's they're coming back from a West Coast trip, and it just seems the last couple they tailed off. It's like a guy who's speeding along on the highway and then notices the um, the gas gauge is getting closer to empty. And I'm just wondering if this stretch of games for them is going to leave them a little empty tonight. First back from uh, from a road trip, even though they've had a couple days off, their record uh, with a couple days off is pretty much a 500 record. The Bruins, yeah, on a back-to-back, but they are 4-2-4 four, and four in the second of a back-to-back. Very little travel in this one because they played in Florida yesterday. And we've talked about the Bruins. Their post-All-Star start was the worst of any team. We had that chart up um, where you you were losing um, a ton of money if you were betting the Bruins post-All-Star break. But uh, they've been very good since that. Uh, they've strung together... Uh, a bunch of wins, and yes, they did lose to the Rangers. They did lose to the Flyers, but that win in Florida yesterday was an impressive one uh, against a, a, a Panthers team. And I think they double up here uh, and uh, and complete the Florida double by beating Tampa. So the uh, I'm a little, you know, I looked at the lines this morning. There was like one. It opened 115, then went down to 110 for Tampa. Now it's back up to 115. Um, those nickel moves don't b- bug me as much. Uh, I, I hope Tampa gets a little bit more money so I can get Boston at even money, but I'm taking the Bruins tonight. I love it, Carmen. And, and yes, I'm, I wasn't laughing. You have been giving them credit. I have to say you have been giving them credit. I remember you saying that about John Cooper like two months ago. So uh, I do respect that. And I think that it's it's just it's just worth mentioning the price you can get for futures right now on this Tampa Bay Lightning team. But Carm's looking at the Bruins to get things done for the second time in as many nights here and a nice price on this Boston Bruins team as well. And you mentioned the traveling that Tampa Bay has been doing lately. So although it's a back-to-back situation for this Bruins team that hasn't even done too poorly in that spot, actually have been pretty successful, uh, still all kinds of travel for Tampa Bay. Do they even know, you know, what state they're in right now? I mean, do they even feel like they're back at home yet? We'll find out, but this is a team that's had success It was certainly a successful road trip. They played some strong teams. They played some weak teams. 
But all I know is I've seen seven of their nine games go over. And we've seen five of six games go over, excuse me, four or five games for the Boston Bruins go over the total. And yesterday's game, Boston and Florida, I watched a good portion of that game. I think that game could have had three or four more goals than than it had. You know, that's the type of pace it had, type of chances it had. And quite frankly, I don't think this game will be nearly as physical as the one they had to deal with last night. And physicality takes away space on the ice. Physicality doesn't leave as much room to make moves as tonight's game, I think, will be. With the talent that both teams have, and David Pasternak pretty much carrying the team last night, creating a lot of the offense on his own. I expect some of the other guys to contribute tonight. And you look back, you know, for this Tampa Bay team, whether it's a game against San Jose or whether it's a game against Florida or whether it's a game against Philadelphia, three different types of teams, they're still putting up goals. They're still in high scoring games. And for this Boston Bruins team right now, I think at their at their true identity, they're an under team. I'm not sure what everybody else thinks about that. I think at their true identity with their goaltenders they have, they are an under team. But I think in this game in particular, right now for the last five games going over, let's get some goals tonight, Carm. Who doesn't love goals? We got two games on tap tonight. Wouldn't shock me if both games had some goals in them. Can't hear you. Cash that ticket. Cash that ticket. Car muted. Cash that ticket. Cash that ticket. Let's bet the uh, let's bet the salami tonight, Andrew. Uh, producer Dan is like just in my ear, man. Uh, let's bet the salami tonight. What was the salami last night? Uh, anyone know? I'm just having a quick look. Uh, it was holy crap. It was 75 and a half yesterday. The 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 salami i don't even know how many goals were scored but uh 75 and a half yesterday on that one there was a lot of goals i can see andrew um yeah i'm hoping for some goals tonight uh be uh, some entertaining hockey uh again that first game no real playoff implications on that one this second one here obviously an important game for for both teams so it's probably the better game of the night. I got to tell you guys real quickly, because we have a little bit of time before we put the chart up. Uh, Chris in our Detroit office, who does a lot of our clipping of the videos and stuff, the guy's phenomenal with the stuff he does. He sends me a comment from a couple of days ago on one of the videos, uh, Puck Time. I think it was Puck Time on Monday. And someone posted in there that, and it was a long post, that they had this dream and they woke up from this dream and they were in their childhood state at the Masters. And and standing in front of them was Carmine Bianco with a pick on the Masters. And that pick ended up winning the Masters, but he couldn't remember what the pick was. So now <laughs> you guys are putting the pressure on me to actually pick a, a winner in the Masters. So here you go. This is, uh, um, he graduated from Texas Tech University. Ludwig Aberg plus 2200 um, to win the Masters this year. Okay, there you go. Um, I have no idea whether he wins it or he doesn't win it, but uh, that's a pretty cool name. Ludwig Aberg plus 2200 from Texas Tech University, graduated, became a pro, I think, uh, a couple of years ago. Andrew, it's worth some pizza money, right? April 11th. 8.30 a.m. Get your bets in. April 11th is when that, that starts. The Masters. Carm giving out golf picks on puck time. I like it. Uh, what you know, a dream. Listen, what a dream that it. is to see you on yeah. the course. <laughs> yeah, you know you know what the best club in my, in my bag is? I started playing golf again last year after a, a long break uh, after I injured my back. Um, I started playing golf again with my friends. The best club I have is my foot wedge. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the foot wedge is when you go into the rough, it's, you take out the foot wedge and you knock it back into the fairway and, uh, and then, uh, hit from there. The foot wedge, it's uh, also Prez's. I've watched the Prez play, um, and he uses the foot wedge a lot when people aren't looking. Um, I would not want to argue with Prez on the golf course. I don't think I'd ever want to, if Prez told me he shot a 64, I'd say, cool. I believe you. I would not want to argue with, I'm not saying he's dishonest, but I would not want to argue with him on the golf course. I would want to have a good time, 
I, have a few drinks. Andrew, one quick one before we get to this one. I played golf with him last year, and we're playing for money on every hole. Not a lot of money, but uh, he's he's a better golfer than me. We hit. Uh, we both hit into. Uh, I hit the fairway. He hit. Uh, he went into the rough. So I'm helping him look for his ball, and uh, and he says he goes, just go ahead, go go ahead and hit. So I go ahead and hit. I hit my ball or whatever. I get into the cart to go over to him. He goes, found it, and then he hits his uh his shot out um and and we head to the balls i didn't have the heart to tell him that i his ball was in my pack back pocket so i'm not sure what ball he found it wasn't his so uh take it with a grain of salt when you're playing with prez uh it's not always <laughs> his ball that he's hitting um with that said guys um the playoffs man uh we're we're so close to the playoffs dan if you could put up this chart so here is the projected um i'm we're gonna dan is gonna bring it up here in a second the projected standings for the nhl if it were to uh, if they continue on the uh on how they're doing right now as far as points go so as you'll see the uh the washington capitals on 92 points get the final spot in the playoffs uh the st blues the St. Louis Blues, the Minnesota Wild on 90 points on the outside looking in. It doesn't really matter because the lowest West team would be the Vegas Golden Knights on 99. The Detroit Red Wings, the closest team to Washington, three points back. There you see chances of making the playoffs, chances of making it to the divisional finals, and of course, chances of winning the Stanley Cup. Right now, the New York Rangers lead pretty much across the, uh, the board as far as uh, division and conference. Uh, there's some weird ones there. You, you'll look at it and you'll think, well, how is how are the New York Rangers 72% uh, percent to win the division and yet only 13% uh, to win the Stanley Cup final? I think it's because the East is, uh, a, is uh, pretty top heavy. You look at uh, Carolina, you look at Florida, their chances of win the Stanley Cup, 37 and 25% um, respectively. So. Any surprises on there, Andrew, at all, as far as Stanley Cup finals? I know you're a Winnipeg Jets ticket holder. They're 7% to win the Stanley Cup uh, or to make it to the Stanley Cup finals. I should say 3% to actually win it. Any surprises on this for you? Vancouver. Vancouver, to me, I don't think should be that high. Um, look, uh, I'm going to say it. I've never really been someone to say it, but... I want a Canadian team to do well. Finally. All right. I'm tired of American teams winning. I know it's Canadian teams or Canadian superstars leading these American teams to success every year, but I want a Canadian team to do well, but that team is not going to be the Canucks. So looking at them where they're ranked just below Carolina, Florida, Dallas, New York, every team has to go through it. Every team has to make the playoffs and then get bounced early. It happened to Colorado for a few years. It happened to Tampa Bay for a few years. It happened to Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals for about nine years because they had to go through Pittsburgh. I just don't think this is the year for, for the Vancouver Canucks. I don't think they should be that high there. A little bit surprised by that. Tampa Bay, uh, should they really be that low? You know, this is the thing. Analytics can't really account for stuff like that. Experience, postseason um, experience, postseason recent history you know wins I, I to me tampa bay should not be that low I, I think it's real interesting though looking at this washington capitals team looking at the detroit red wings though man is detroit gonna like imagine being a detroit fan imagine thinking for sure you were getting playoff hockey for like the last two months month and a half you thought yeah we're getting playoff hockey for sure back in detroit and it might not happen carm that would be shocking if washington makes the playoffs it would be real crazy yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because you look at the 16 teams and, you know, I, I'm old school because I'm older than I think everybody uh, in, in the chat right now as well, too. But um, I love back in the days of uh, the top 16 teams made it and it was one versus 16, two versus 15 and so on and forth. So, so, uh, you know, so, so, so on and so forth. Uh, Andrew, if you look at it. Um, if it was one versus 16 and all the way down, the Florida Panthers, 
uh, sitting in third on this list, would be playing the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round of the playoffs, a rematch of last year's Stanley Cup. Well, you look at some of these pairings, and and they're they're phenomenal. We would see, you know, the Carolina Hurricanes playing against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round, uh, Nashville, Vancouver, uh, Boston, LA Kings, Colorado, um, and Toronto, um, and then Edmonton and uh, Winnipeg, who played last night. Uh, those would be some phenomenal ones, but I get it. They can't do it. Uh, travel, TV. Uh, it's pretty much TV more than anything else. The TV contracts uh, have ruined everything. The travel. Uh, I don't think travel's as big a uh, issue as um, they make it out to be. Um, come playoff time, they could stretch it out. Uh, uh, we could have Stanley Cup playoffs to the end of June if we wanted to, and at one versus sixteen. But they're never going to do it. So, um, with that said. Andrew, any last thoughts on this uh, before we get into our um, our best bets? And uh, and you got a promo. Yeah, last thoughts would just be about uh, forecasting. The same thing that you do quite a bit, Carm. The same thing I do with my uh, buy and sell segment. You know that that is what it's all about: forecasting for teams making the playoffs, not making the playoffs. I think it's really important, guys. Sundays, Mondays, one of those days. I think it's important to look ahead. You know, open up your NHL ESPN, the score app, NHL app, whatever it might be. Scroll around, look to see what the matchups are going to be. The big games, the the bottom tier games, a few teams, who they're playing. I think that that's uh, always super helpful to do. So uh, that's just a little bit of advice there and something that I like looking at ahead of time. Uh, Yeah, the promo, unbelievable promo, guys. Take advantage of it. I want to make it very clear what this promo is. So you're going to get the rest of, of the season. Of the regular season in the NHL, rest of the three weeks of the regular season at the price of one, you're going to get both myself and Carmine. So if you guys want NHL plays, you want sides, totals, team totals, props, no promo code needed. You go to my page, you go to Carmine's page. The special is already there, written up. You check out, you purchase it, you get an email with my plays, Carmine's uh, plays, analysis on all plays, 3% or higher, and uh, this, of course, does include the 5% plays. So, guys, take advantage of it. If you want, we're going to try and heat up, uh, keep things going. Carm's on a great run, and uh, we are looking forward to playoffs. Carm, I'll kick things off with uh, my NHL free play of the day here, but I will say uh, MLB, uh, number two in totals last year, and uh, I was plus 30 units. I got a great package up right now. Rest of my NHL plus the first half of the MLB season. You guys can grab that over at wagertalk.com. My best bet is going to be Jacob Chikrin over two and a half shots on goal. He's cashed this in eight of his last nine games. Defenseman for the Ottawa Senators. I believe he'll have a good night tonight for the Senators against the Sabres. All right. uh, Awesome. I'm just looking at uh, Joe Ranieri, our... uh fantastic producer as well too dropped something uh in uh, a shout out to those guys obviously watching on mobile devices uh via our youtube shorts feed um poll question who misses the playoffs this season uh they put um some options up detroit 36 percent washington 32 percent both 18 percent neither uh, 14% uh, for neither to miss the playoffs. That means that producer Dan's Philadelphia Flyers would have to drop off the face of the earth. I'm not sure he's happy about that one, but Detroit, 36%, man. Uh, that breaks my heart because our crew in Detroit are uh, absolutely fabulous, as you know. Andrew, and what better um, follow-up to the Detroit Lions, you know, making it into the playoffs and winning a playoff game than the Detroit Red Wings returning back to the playoffs again. Uh, what's it been, like an eight, nine, ten-year absence for the Red Wings in the playoffs, man? Uh, Showtime almost did it last night, Patrick Kane, but uh, they get to play Washington uh, again, uh, but they're going to have to string some wins together and play some defense. Um, I'm hoping it's Washington misses the playoffs, but sadly, I think I'm wrong on that one. With that said, uh, only one play up, uh in the NHL tonight, I may have a player prop as well too. Only a two game card, uh, not the greatest tomorrow, a very good card. And uh, I'll have uh, some plays loaded later on this evening. For those ones, I'm just working on some MLB futures 
uh, for my clients. Uh, my free play, I'm going to go back to this game in uh, Boston, the second game that we talked about today. And I'm going to take the over in this game. I think we're going to see some goals in this game. Uh, it's currently sitting at six, oh, minus 105. Uh, this game opened at five and a half, I believe, a shot to six. It's not going any higher than that, of course. Uh, maybe a little bit of juice on the over. But uh, first game back for Tampa off that road trip. They scored. They've been scoring plenty of goals. Bruins on their second of a back-to-back, 4-2-4 four, and four in the second of a back-to-back. Uh, we'll see some goals from them, hopefully, as well, too. Vasilevsky is confirmed. Bruins goalie isn't. As of yet, uh, over six is your show free play. Carl, let's do it again. We swept it yesterday. We'll try and sweep it again here. Went from a massive slate yesterday to a very small one. Uh, but either way, let's try and make some money tonight in the NHL. Guys, on the way out, hit the like button. Make sure if you're watching on your mobile devices, you are checking out the YouTube shorts live on every show. Wager Talk TV. Thanks so much, guys. See you next.